Hello everyone, I'm Mihai Paon from Bayreuth University and I will be the moderator for the following uh, talk by Arend Bayer and Emanuele Macri. A short presentation of these two gentlemen. Um, Arend Bayer is a professor of algebraic geometry at the University of Edinburgh and his main research topics are in uh, derived categories, stability conditions, and chrome of wit and invariants. As for Emmanuel Macri, he's a professor at the Université Paris-Saclay. He's interested in birational algebraic geometry, stability conditions, and special in phases in hyperkähler manifolds. Before the um, lecture starts, um, just a short announcement concerning the question, questions and answers. So there will be no time for questions after the talk, so please, um, ask your questions during the lecture and the two speakers will do their best to answer you. I hope you enjoyed a very beautiful lecture to come. Hello, uh, welcome. So the topic uh, of, uh, of our talk is uh, recent progress uh, in the, in, on wall crossing, uh, stability conditions, uh, and their applications uh, in algebraic geometry. And the story of our talk, as almost always in mathematics, is a big community effort where our own work depends a lot on the ideas and um, results of others, probably to a greater extent that is immediately apparent. And in turn, what we did has been pushed forward and advanced by many others alongside us. And highlighting this nature of the progress has really been one of the pleasures of preparing this talk. So the story starts with vector bundles on curves and who could introduce them more eloquently than Michael Atia, which he did at the ICM 60 years ago, where he explained that modern algebraic geometers basically don't distinguish between modules and vector bundles. And the theory starts with the projective line where every vector bundle is just a direct sum of line bundles. And then the next step is the elliptic curve where Atia famously proved that um, in the composable bundles, once you fix the rank and degree, they are naturally parametrized by the elliptic curve itself. And so this result in one of its very early papers in some sense is the starting theory of the theory of vector bundles and their moduli spaces. And so the first question becomes how to generalize this to higher genus, how to classify and parameterize bundles on curves of higher genus. Yeah, historically the first attempt was indeed by, by the notion of a simple bundle and uh, does generalize directly the result by idea. But it might happen that the limit of such bundles uh, is not unique or uh, in other language, uh, that the moduli space uh, parameterizing uh, such simple bundles uh, might not be separated. And so the solution to this problem uh, was found by asking that uh, such a space, such a moduli space, uh, to be well behaved. Since they arise as quotient, uh, this led naturally to the notion of uh, uh, semi-stable or stable bundle coming from uh, geometric invariant theory. The remarkable fact is that uh, uh, this condition of stability has uh, a very uh, a quite easy formulation in terms of the rank and degree of, uh, of a vector bundle and the condition of being of positivity for the sub bundle. Indeed, in the same uh, in the ICM uh, address by, by David Manford, actually from the same ICM uh, uh, Congress uh, in 1962, He's, in his own word, uh, he says that uh, uh, a vector bundle is stable if all its subbundles are less ample than itself. And this translates into this equation uh, that you see it over here in terms of degree and rank. In modern language, uh, we can rewrite this condition as follows. So we introduce uh, a, a central charge uh, Z, which is uh, uh, given by the real part is given by minus degree 
and the imaginary part is given by the rank. And then equivalently, we can say that a vector bundle on a curve is semi-stable. If for all sub-bundles f in E, we have that the argument of Z of f is more or equal than the argument of the central charge of E. And the definition for stability is analogous, just replacing the inequality with a strict inequality. Then the basic properties of these notions are, boy, as, as I told you, the modular spaces parameterizing equivalence classes of semi-stable bundles, once you fix the rank and degree, exist as they are projective varieties. Moreover, for the question of classification, uh, we have a canonical filtration. So the idea is to replace uh, the direct sum decomposition uh, as Aaron talked uh, for P1 with a filtration, which is called the hard Nazimov filtration, with the property that uh, each sub quotient uh, is semi stable. And for giving the uniqueness, uh, is that the argument uh, of the semi stable factor of the hard Nazimov factors are decreasing. Okay. And uh, as applications, uh, but the, the first one is uh, what this classifies uh, vector bundles exactly as we want uh, in a mix between uh, what we saw for P1 and for the elliptic curves. So every vector bundle, uh, we can canonically associate these hard Nazimov factors. And these factors comes move uh, in, uh, in a modular space, which is uh, a projective variety. And second thing, uh, the more interesting modular spaces uh, actually give some interesting projective varieties. Uh, that um, one can study by using vector bundle theory on the curve. And not only that, uh, in some sense, this gives uh, a set of uh, non-commutative analog of the classical relation uh, that associated to a curve, it's Jacobian. And now the question becomes how to push this to, to um, higher dimension while keeping the properties of slope stability as strongly as possible. And particularly, you want to have a notion of stability that only depends on a degree and a rank. And so for this, we have to go to the derived category. So uh, algebraists these days probably often think about differential graded modules. And in the same way, algebraic geometers often think of complexes of vector bundles rather than vector bundles. So we go to the derived category. And the notion of stability here was, of course, introduced by Bridgson now almost 20 years ago, and here advertised in his ICM address 16 years ago. And so let me summarize this definition specifically in the case of a smooth projective K3 surface. So a K trivial surface with, which is simply connected. And so we look at the bounded derived category of coherent sheaves. And for the numerical invariance, instead of just looking rank and degree, we've used the Mokai vector, which is just a small twist of the churn character. And so here comes the definition. So a stability condition is a pair Z comma A where Z is a group homomorphism to the complex plane, and A is the heart of a bounded T structure, which in particular means it's a full abelian subcategory of the derived category. And so these two together should mimic the formal properties of slope stability on curves as closely as possible. So this con means concretely the following. First of all, if I take an object <coughs> in the heart then its central charge is supposed to be in the semi-closed upper half plane. So either the upper half plane or the negative real line. So this means that the imaginary part is a rank function, which is not negative, and the real part is a degree function, which becomes positive for objects of rank zero. And that then means that we can mimic the definition of um, slope stability via sub-objects of an object in E that are sub-object in this abelian subcategory. And the second condition then is that for this notion of slope stability on this abelian category A, hard on a Zimmern filtrations uh, exist again. So the third property initially looks a little bit less intuitive, but it's also quite easy to explain why we need it. So if you look at the object in the heart, then the central charge can never be zero. And in particular, if you take a semi stable object, then its central charge cannot be zero. And so the condition here is just that we also want this to be true after small deformations of the central charge. So in other words, if you look at the kernel of the central charge, then we want there to be a neighborhood around this kernel that does not contain any Mokai vectors of semi-stable objects. And then you formalize this property via a quadratic form that separates Mokai vectors of semi-stable objects from the kernel of the central charge. And finally, we want that 
um, semi-stable objects of fixed Mokai vector are in a bounded family, and that being semi-stable is an open property in families. And this was first shown by Toda that these are the first two ingredients, necessary ingredients to get well-behaved moduli spaces of semi-stable object. We'll make that a little bit more precise later on. And then the main theory, a theorem of the theory is Bridgeland's deformation theorem. So it says in words that a stability condition can be uniquely deformed by deformations of Z. So in the specific case of K3 surfaces, it says that there is a specific, very explicitly defined period domain inside the set of central charges, and the space of stability condition is a covering map onto that um, onto that period domain. Yeah. So in the theory of stability on K3 surfaces, uh, it is hard to overestimate the influence of Mukai's work. In particular, his 1987 paper, which uh, we have an extract here and which laid the foundation of the theory and uh, had uh, applications uh, and open new research directions. And uh, to properly state his result, uh, let me introduce a bit more in in a bit more orientation. So for a K3 surface uh, X, we, 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 we denote by, we consider a Mukai vector and we split it according uh, to the components in uh, H0, H2, H4. And then uh, we define a symmetric uh, uh, non-degenerate form, uh, a quadratic form uh, on the cohomology by telling, by asking, uh, by taking V squared as the cap product on the H2 component minus two times V0, V2, and then integrating uh, all over X. So the motivation for this definition comes from uh, here's a Brokrima rock because it can be easily written uh, the Euler characteristic of an object uh, in terms of Mukai pair. And so uh, once we have this one, uh, the main result in the theorem is the theory is the following. So this is due to many people, as I said, Mukai coming from that paper that we just saw, then uh, Kuleshov, uh, then subsequent uh, generalization has been done by O'Grady, Hoibrex, uh, to arrive to the final result uh, in the case of sheaves, uh, which is due to Yoshioka. And finally, the generalization uh, to, to complexes, uh, which are due to Toda and to R and myself. And so the statement is the following. So let us take V, a primitive Mukai vector, namely it is in the, in the indivisible over Z. And let's take sigma, a generic stability condition uh, with respect to V. So this means that there will be an open subset of such stability conditions in the space of stability condition. Then the result is the following. We take a moduli space of semi-stable objects with fixed Mukai vector V, and we ask for, uh, for it to be non-empty. And the condition is very simple. The moduli space is non-empty if and only if its expected dimension, which is, uh, uh, which is written as 2D, which can be computed by riemann rock as V squared plus 2, is non-negative. Okay. And in such a way, we can also, in, in such a case, you can also say a bit more about the moduli space. So the moduli space is actually a very interesting variety. It is smooth, it is projective in this case, and by, by Mukai work, it, has, it also carries a symplectic form, and it is also simply connected. And the symplectic form is unique up to constant. Namely, by Yao's theorem, the, the, it carries a, 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 a hyperkeller metric, and so it becomes a hyperkeller manifold of dimension 2D. Finally, for applications, uh, given the stability condition, uh, induces canonically a, a divisor class on this modular space, uh, which is ample. And uh, we'll see in the application uh, the, the importance of this divisor as well. So let me, give, let me say two lines about the proof. So what is the idea? The first idea is that the formation theory for K3 surfaces worked very well, and for modular space as well. So I can start from any K3 surface and the, and the form to reach a K3 surface, uh, which has an elliptic vibration. So the general fiber is an elliptic curve. And then I get the non-emptiness results uh, in some sense, uh, just by the use by the TR results that 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 we saw at the beginning. So we know how to produce uh, uh, stable bundles uh, on the fibers, uh, and this gives us uh, stable bundles on the on the K3 surface. And the second step uh, is to use this construction uh, plus uh, Hilbert schemes of points on K3 surfaces uh, to, to prove the general case. And so for doing this, uh, we have two ingredients. The first one is Fourier Mukai transforms, 
namely equivalences of the derived category of a K3 surface. And the second is wall crossing. So in uh, very roughly, you start with uh, a modulized space uh, with respect to a, condi to a stability condition sigma, you apply Fourier Mokite's uh, transform, this will send uh, a stable object uh, into another stable object, but maybe with respect to a different stability condition. And then we have to go back to the original stability condition. And uh, for doing this, we need to control uh, how st stable object changes or how modulized spaces changes uh, on, the, on this path. And this is exactly what World Crossing does for us. Okay, now that Emanuele has developed the theory, I get the fun part of talking about applications. First, again, in the case of K3 surfaces. And so the first application we want to discuss is a picture that Aaron Bertram persuaded us to pursue. So it says the following, that the minimal model program of the moduli space, so it's all its birational models and its um, uh, other minimal models can be completely understood via wall crossing as sigma varies in the space of stability conditions. So the picture here is ambiguous and that's exactly the point. It's either the cone of movable divisors of the moduli space, where the walls separate NEF cones of different birational models, or it is the space of stability conditions where the walls indicate where the set of semi-stable objects of Mokai vector V changes. And so the point is that Mokai theory allows us first to describe explicitly where these walls are in the space of stability conditions, and second, to exa understand exactly what by rational transformations they un induce on the moduli space. And together with this naturally associated line bundle, this then gives a map from the space of stability conditions to the movable cone of the moduli space. And this then leads to a completely effective control of the birational geometry of the moduli space. We can determine its NEF cone, we can list its birational models, and so on. And then with the deformation argument, this actually extends to any hypercalarity of this deformation type, which is the deformation type of Hilbert scheme of points on K3 surfaces. The second application we call Mokai's dream because it's a picture that he pioneered in many situations. And it says the following, if you have two moduli spaces of stable sheaves or stable complexes on K3 surfaces, can be the same K3, it can be two different K3s. Then if there is a birational map between these two moduli spaces, then it's always induced by a Fourier Mokai transform that gives an equivalence between the underlying K3 surfaces in the following sense. If you take a generic object in this moduli space and you apply the Fourier Mokai transform, then you end up with a stable object in the other moduli space. And this then induces the birational map we started with on an open subset. The third application is something that was initiated by Mokai for genus 11 and then pushed and advanced further by Abarello, Bruni, and Cernesi. So it is about the following question. If you take a generic K3 of sufficiently big genus, and now you take a curve in its primitive linear system, then just by the relation between the moduli spaces of curves and of K3s, we know that the curve completely determines the K3 surface. But the question then becomes is whether we can make this an effective geometric construction. And what Mokai first proposed and was, was then proved using wall crossing um, by fate sparks in great generality is that this can be done through a Bernoulli locus of stable vector bundles on the curve that have more than the expected number of global sections. So what Facebook proved exactly is that the Bernoulli locus of these vector bundles with more sections, they're exactly those vector bundles that are restrictions of stable vector bundles on the K3. And so this then relates a model space of vector bundles on the K3 with this Bernoulli locus, and then combined with standard theory of Fourier Mokai partners, this allows you to reconstruct the K3. Let me also briefly discuss other surfaces. So the general theory works well. Stability conditions were constructed explicitly by Akaro Bertram. Moduli spaces of semi-stable objects, they exist as proper algebraic spaces if you use this notion of alpha of a good moduli space. And the, this program has also been very successful in the case of the projective plane. So this picture of this complete 
relation between wall crossing and the minimal model program of the moduli space. This also works in this case. So this was proved by um, Juni Lee and Charlie Zhao, but really based on the work of quite a number of people and various progress before them. And this then in turn, various aspects of this story then led to applications to Donaldson Thomas and Gromov Witten theory in the work of Pierre Rousseau. Yeah, but uh, the story does not stop here. In some sense, the definition of bridge instability is uh, works in uh, for any dimension uh, and actually for any category. The problem is that uh, the existence of stability condition uh, becomes uh, a non-trivial questions, st questions, starting from trifles. And actually, already in the surface case, uh, the construction is not obvious. So, um, in fact, uh, the point is that the category of coherence shift will never be the heart of a bounded structure associated to a bridge on stability in dimension two or higher. And so the solution was the following, was via the notion of tilting. So and this was, uh, was studied by Bridgeland. And so the idea is uh, you start from coherent shift and then you cut uh, your category and you re-glue re into get another category, which now becomes uh, two term complexes. So it's a bit more complicated. But in some sense, from the viewpoint of stability, we gain something. And so I'll explain a bit why. But for the moment, for the definition is that uh, we take, uh, it's here, so you say, is you take two term complexes, uh, and you ask that uh, the co-kernel uh, has only positive slopes uh, with respect to uh, slope stability, and in its Ardenazian filtration, and the kernel uh, has only non-positive slopes in, this, in its uh, Ardenazian filtration. So it is a two term category, right? And, uh, then uh, the theorem says that on this category you can construct bridge on stability. Now, when you go to threefold, the construction is more involved because this procedure of tilting still works. So we can go from coherent shift to the tilted category A. We can do the same procedure as before, so induce uh, a stability condition on this uh, on this heart. But now this won't be a, a bridge on stability condition. It will be a weaker notion of stability, which we call uh, tilt stability. Okay. But now the idea is the following. When you are on a threefold, this new notion of stability, the stability, does behave a bit like slope stability for sheaf, for sheaves on a surface. And so we can try to reiterate the process again. So we can tilt again in the same definition as is written here to obtain a new heart B. This time will be a heart whose objects are three term complexes, whose cohomology are not so easy to describe. But anyway, so this is a category, which is a heart. And then uh, the attempt is to try to introduce bridge stability directly on this heart. The issue is the following, is that uh, already for uh, uh, defining bridge stability in the case of surface, this is based uh, on uh, to, uh, the category is well-defined, but to prove that there is a well-defined Z, we need to use uh, um, uh, Bogomolov inequality, which is a certain inequality involving churn classes uh, for stable vector bundles. And so for doing the same, uh, in dimension three, we do need uh, an analog of such inequality, which is uh, some sort of Bogomolov type inequality, governing this time the churn character of uh, till stable object, uh, objects in this category A. So this is not anymore geometric, as uh, it's some, some conjecture inequality, which, um, which is very hard to prove. It has been proven in certain examples that we're going to see, but in general, it's wide open. Okay. The other two problems that we have in higher dimension are more classical, uh, and these already exist uh, for vector bundles or for, for sheaves. So the first thing is that uh, even, with this, even when this inequality is satisfied, uh, it seems very hard to have a result similar to, to Mukai's uh, theorem for the K3 surfaces. So it seems very hard to be able to detect uh, walls or non-emptiness of moduli spaces numerically. Secondly, Moduli spaces, uh, while for surfaces they are nicer in general, in uh, for three for three or higher dimension, uh, these are uh, highly badly behaved. So they, they are arbitrarily singular. They have multiple components, uh, and these components can also be generically non-reduced. But there have been quite a number of successes in specific situations. So in particular, let me discuss existence. This is now known in quite a number of cases. So the first case over quite a series of papers by different authors, we now know the existence of stability conditions through this Bogomolov type conjecture for all final three-folds. And then a 
big step was the first construction in a K-triple case for abelian threefolds, first done by Pierre Ratner and Machacha. And then maybe the biggest methodological advance was the case of printing threefolds in work by Juni Lee. And they also um, alternate constructions for varieties with the exception of collections and or those that are products of a curve in the surface. And there are also a number of applications which are mostly actually not applications of the notion of bridge instability itself. Instead, they are applications of this notion of still tilt stability together with the known cases of the conjecture controlling the churn classes of these tilt semi-stable two-term complexes. And so the first one is about degree genus bounds for curves. So here the problem is the following. You take curves on a given threefold, you fix the degree, and you also fix the minimal degree of a hypersurface containing them. And then there are expected um, range of genus that are allowed. So generalizing the, the, the classical castor nova relation. And this is known for some ranges um, for P3 due to work of Harris and Gruss and Peskin. And you can use tilt stability to reprove these results in the case of P3. So it gives a new approach and they then automatically also prove it for the case of abelian threefolds. On the other hand, there have been a number of applications to Donaldson summer theory where you can circumvent some of these difficulties using um, the virtual counting and wall crossing formulas. And in particular, let me highlight applications to higher rank Donaldson summer theory. So phage spectrum farmers prove using ball crossing that the Donaldson summer theory of sheaves of high rank is completely controlled by the Donaldson summer theory of sheaves of rank one. So in other words, of ideal sheaves of curve. And so the idea roughly is that we can use wall crossing to make all such sheaves of higher rank unstable and then control its semi-stable factors of our lower rank and thereby get an inductive process. Okay, but going further with this approach, even to higher to even higher dimension would certainly be challenging. And there is an alternative approach that has been quite successful that works for three and higher dimensional final varieties, which is to not consider the entire derived category. And instead we consider a certain subcategory that we call Kusnets of component, which contains most of the non-trivial information of the derived category, but in many ways is a little bit better behaved and has been studied extensively by Kusnets. Yeah, and the theory, the theory is, uh, is actually quite general, but we'll see here only the case of cubic fourfold uh, where, it's, uh, where it is already very rich. And so here in an excerpt, excerpt uh, from the uh, Kuznets of uh, ICM address uh, in 2014, uh, introduces such a category. And in some sense, the goal of the talk uh, is, or the rest of the talk, uh, is to explain the last paragraph here. So how Mukai theory can be generalized to this, uh, to this non-commutative setting, which we're going to, in, to introduce, and uh, present some geometric consequences for the cubic fourfold itself. So to, to give the proper definition, let me let's, let denote by X a, a smooth hypersurface in P5 of degree 3, enabling a cubic fourfold. And the definition, we define a subcategory Q of X of the bounded derived category of coherent sheaf on X as the right orthogonal of the three line bundles O of X, O of X of one, the hyperplane section, and O of X of two. So a priori, this category is just uh, uh, abstractly defined as a subcategory as follows. But the point is that it is extremely well behaved as a category. So the first property is likely technical, but can be uh, roughly explained as follows. So this category is smooth and proper in a precise way. So namely, in this condition, uh, it translates to the following, uh, that if you take the inclusion functor from, uh, from the Kuznetsov component into db of x, uh, this admits both left and right adjoint. Moreover, these adjoints uh, are actually explicitly and geometrically, they just, uh, they just correspond to, they extend uh, something that was uh, classically known, for example, the CCG bundle uh, associated with certain vector bundle. From the viewpoint of uh, the category being smooth and proper, in particular, it makes sense, uh, ser duality makes sense on this category. And from the viewpoint of ser duality, this category does behave uh, like uh, the derived category of a surface with trivial canonical bundle. 
namely ser duality, is given in the right category just by the shift by two functor. But there is a bit more. So um, we can define a notion of cohomology for this category, like singular cohomology. And uh, the, this cohomology has a Hodge structure. And the lattice, uh, which is uh, underlying this structure, is exactly the same as the cohomology, the whole cohomology of uh, a K3 surface, together with the Mukai pairing. Then we have a notion of, of uh, algebraic classes, and we have a notion of Mukai vector, exactly as in the K3 surface case. Moreover, quite surprisingly, objects in this category do behave very nicely from the viewpoint of the formation theory. So a priori, these are objects in a fourfold. So again, horrible. But uh, belonging to this category, for example, uh, means the following as the following consequence uh, that uh, if moduli spaces exist, uh, then this moduli space will be smooth uh, and symplectic. Okay. And so this work of Kuznetsov Markushevich. So they are really, really similar to what uh, uh, comes with K3 surfaces. And finally, indeed, uh, they are so similar that there are example, examples where uh, the Kuznetsov component is the derived category of a K3 surface. The classical case is the, cl the case of Fafian cubics. There, by using Kuznetsov homological projective duality, one can show that, one can show that uh, the Kuznetsov component is the right equivalent to the associated K3 surface, uh, which is a genus 8 K3 surface. The, the theorem, uh, or better, the conjecture that motivated the, the, um, the whole theory is the following. So it says that uh, the Kuznetsov component uh, is able to detect uh, uh essentially the whole barrational geometry of the cubic itself and so to be precise uh, it says that uh, x uh, uh, as cubic four for this rational namely barrational to be four if and only if the cousin of component is uh, the right equivalent to a k3 surface and so the example of the fafian cubic so the theorem of fafian cubic is exactly uh, an example of this of this conjecture what this conjecture is true so in general the conjecture is widely open both directions okay but uh, a small remark about this conjecture is the following is that uh, if you take a very general cubic fourfold then the cousin of component will never be the right equivalent to actually never uh, any variety even twisted so they are purely non-commutative objects and then what we need is a notion of stability on this category so in other words we need to construct stability conditions on this cousins of component and this may look very challenging because we have to go to a fourfold and then restrict to a subcategory. But it turns out that we can actually approach this via a non commutative threefold. So the construction is the following very natural and geometric. We choose a line in the cubic threefold. Then, of course, we can project to a P3, which gives us a vibration in conic curves from the blow up of X at this line. To P3. And so to a conic vibration, we have an associated Clifford algebra. And then by general work of Kuznetsov on quadric vibration, one can deduce that this Kuznetsov component is also an admissible subcategory of the derived category of the even part of the Clifford algebra. So we look at sheaves of modules over this Clifford algebra on P3, take its derived category, and Q of X is an admissible subcategory there. And the result in joint work with Marty Lahose and Paolo Stellari is first that on this non commutative threefold, we can construct tilt stability exactly as we did before for commutative threefolds. So, for that, we need to prove a, a standard type Bogomolov Giesecke inequality, which works by restriction to, to surfaces. And then we get this notion of tilt stability. And then the second part is that this restricts to a bridge and stability condition on the cousins of component. So here we really restrict the central charge to the subcategory and the abelian category, the heart of a pounded T structure, we just take the intersection with the cousins of component. And the result is that this, in this specific case, induces a bridge and stability condition. And once the bridge stability condition is introduced, the next step is to try to, to is, we can aim at having a full generalization of Mukai's theory to this non commutative context. And so the idea is quite simple. So as we mentioned in the, in the, in the proof of the original uh, result uh, for K3 surface, the idea was to the four, use the formation theory to reduce the case of uh, elliptic K3 surfaces. 
Here we do the same, but instead of deforming uh, um, to a K3 surface, we deform the cubic fourfold to something uh, which we know how, how it works. So it's a case of Fafian cubics. Okay. And uh, to do this, uh, the problem is the following is that uh, before, in some sense, we were using just uh, the existence of relative moduli space of stable sheaves, which behave very nicely. And here, for doing the same, the same approach, uh, we do need uh, to generalize the notion of bridge line stability to uh, bridge line stability over a base, so in family. And so in particular, we need to do it for a family of cubic fourfold, or more precisely, for a family of cousins of components associated to cubic fourfolds. And fortunately, this has been done. And so this is, was joint work uh, uh, recent with uh, Martila Hoss, uh, Howie Neuer, Alex Perry, and Paolo Stellari. And so the first result is that such a notion of stability condition of bridge and stability condition in family does exist for a family of variety or of varieties or more generally for a family for a family of categories. And in the case of cubic fourfold, this works. Okay, actually, it works in general in all known examples where a stability condition has been constructed. And finally, the key property is that uh, uh, moduli spaces or better relative moduli spaces exist of semi-stable objects exist. And uh, as in the case of sheaf, mostly, they are proper over the base. Okay. And so once we have this result, uh, the next step is to try to generalize uh, Mukai smoothness argument. And again, this is a bit surprising because we are on a fourfold, but now, now it should not be because this category is really behave like a key tree surface. And so the, the statement is the following. So if you have a family of cubic fourfolds, and we have an object in the Kuzo component in a special fiber, then we can explicitly say, we can ex exactly say when this object deforms uh, to the whole family. And the condition is simply that the Mukai vector of this object remain uh, algebraic on all fibers. In other words, uh, this means that the relative moduli space, uh, both with respect to a primitive vector, maybe for a generic stability condition, the relative moduli space is smooth over a base. And so from one hand, we have it smooth. From uh, the other results, we have it's uh, proper. And so if you have a proper and smooth uh, uh, moduli space, uh, if we know that in a certain fiber uh, is non-empty, we know that in all fiber, the moduli space is non-empty. And so we then apply directly this argument uh, and obtain a result, uh, which is very similar to what we had before. So for a primitive vector, for a generic stability condition, the moduli space is non-empty, if and only if uh, its expected dimension uh, is greater or equal than zero. In such a case, uh, the moduli space uh, is smooth, projective, and it is an hyperkeller manifold, uh, which is the formation equivalent to a Hilbert scheme of points on a K3 surface, and also comes with a natural polarization associated to it. And also, as in the case of K3 surfaces, I again get the fun of discussing applications. And in fact, first I want to discuss examples, and the statements here are all due to work by Chuni Li, Pertuzzi, and Charlie Zhao. So, which here we look at the first examples of moduli spaces that exist for an arbitrary cubic fourfold. And the first one is the fine variety of lines, also sometimes called Bobil Donagi fourfold. So here the statement is just that if we take a line on the cubic fourfold and then we apply this projection functor back from the derived category to the cosines of component, then applying this to the ideal sheaf of a line gives you a stable object, and the moduli space of stable object is just the final variety of lines. There are no other objects in this stable object in this moduli space. In the second example, something interesting already happened. So here we look at twisted cubics contained in the cubic fourfold, so rational degree three curves contained in the cubic fourfold. And here, if we apply this projection functor to ideal sheaf of twisted cubics, then sometimes two different twisted cubics have the same image under this projection functor. But the good news is that the, this identifies exactly those twisted cubics that we want to identify. Namely, if you take a cubic surface that you get from the cubic fourfold as a hyperplane section, then this has many linear systems of twisted cubics on it. If you take one such linear system, then this i upper star i z will be the same for all twisted cubics in this given linear system. And so this is exactly how Lene and Zerger von Straten constructed their hyperkähler eightfold using this construction starting with the 10 dimensional Hilbert scheme of twisted cubic on the, on the eightfold. And so this 
geometric construction that they um, did explicitly is here automatically done for you by the um, by the categorical framework. And another interesting aspect is that it naturally contains the cubic fourfold itself, namely as the projections of um, ideal sheaves of points on the cubic fourfold. So this then corresponds to singular cubic surfaces obtained as hyperplane sections. The third example is the singular or Grady type model of the Vazan tenfold. So this is a natural twist of the Lazar-Zaka Vazan tenfold obtained from the intermediate Jacobian vibration of the system of um, hyperplane sections of cubic threefolds. And here the objects that um, that they use is the projections of ideal sheaf of elliptic quintics. So now let me get to applications. So the first one addresses exactly this question appearing in Kusnets of conjecture. When is the Kusnets of component derived equivalent to a K3 surface? And the result says that this happens if and only if the cubic fourfold has a hot theoretically associated K3 surface, which just means that so it's a polarized K3 surface and its primitive cohomology embeds into the primitive cohomology of the cubic fourfold. And the proof is actually very quick. So this has a condition. Because there's a relation between the um, H4 of the cubic and the cohomology of this uh, Kusnets of component, one can show that this Hasek condition is equivalent to the existence of an isotropic vector of square zero that has a partner that it pairs with S1 in the algebraic cohomology. And so if you look at the associated modular space, it must be two dimensional, so a K3 surface. And this pairing condition then means that it has a universal family. And so by the general theory of derived equivalences by all of an other system means it is derived equivalent to the Kusnets of component. A second application is an alternative proof of the Torelli theorem. So here, as I said before, H4 of X determines the cohomology of the Kusnets of component. And this done by the Torelli theorem for hypercalar fourfolds gives you the far variety of lines together with its Plücker polarization. And then it's an argument by Francois Charles that this actually lets you recover the cubic fourfold itself, basically by identifying the lines if you take the union of the lines in X. And finally, for special cubic fourfolds, we can also use these modular spaces to construct rational maps that only exist from such special cubic fourfolds. So for example, in the case where this eightfold that I discussed is the Hilbert scheme of a um, K3 surface, so it must be Hilbert scheme of four points, then you have this embedding of X into this eightfold. But Hilbert 4 from a K3 always has a rational map to help 5 by just adding a point on the K3 that you fixed. And then we use the minimal model program for Hilbert 5 and restrict it to X and this way get new rational maps from X. Finally, we want to discuss some open questions. So when I found out a few weeks ago that OpenAI has a public available interface, I of course had to try out what it knows about uh, derived categories. And so here in white, you see the text prompt I gave it, and then green is the auto completion. And it started out very nice here and was pleased, but then came the last sentence. But who are we to argue with OpenAI? And it's certainly right that there are many open questions in the field that we are, some of which we are going to discuss. Yeah, exactly. And uh, well, certainly the first basic open question uh, is the one about projectivity of moduli spaces. So we do know this is true when the moduli space has uh, some nice singularity, it's projective. And we have always a divisor which, is, uh, with a, which has a st strictly positive intersection with all curves. But the general answer to this question uh, is uh, currently unknown. Another interesting question for uh, the generation arguments uh, is to understand the case of uh, singular varieties. Okay, so again, surfaces uh, might, might be the, the, start, the starting point to, to, uh, for our analysis. And then next, uh, well, Mukai's theory for uh, general K3 categories uh, can have more applications, both to the theory of hyperkeller manifolds, but also for Fano manifolds. In fact, uh, an analogous result of, uh, of what we just presented in the cubic fourfold case uh, has been proved recently for Gushul Mukai fourfolds by Perry, Pertusi, and Zhao. And, uh, and this indeed has uh, some interesting application uh, to the geometry of uh, Gushul Mukai fourfolds. Finally, the last two projects were trifolds, 
as we saw, there are many examples where the, the Bogomolov type inequality has been proved, uh, but in general, we still don't know uh, such inequality and we still don't know existence of bridge instability. Another related question today is about uh, special varieties. So there might be interesting uh, uh, geometric consequence of the existence of stability condition and the, such existence uh, can be maybe not too far away from being proved. And the main example here that uh, of the first example is the case of abelian varieties. And finally, we can uh, we mention as well connection with rationality, a bit along the line that what Aaron presented just before. So, for example, uh, we can expand uh, on the construction of uh, rational maps uh, from a cubic fourfold, uh, and then maybe get some step towards uh, Kuznov conjecture. But I think our time is over now, so I want to thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you, and maybe we can all come back to future ICMs and learn about answers to some of these open questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.